we catapulted into the news of um, Azalea's got leukemia. Did you think everything was going to be okay? Yeah. One thing that my mom taught me was to never give up and to keep going. The nurses became, oh, it's so sad. Azalea's aunties. I would stare that oncologist in the face and I would tell her, no is not an option. It's not an option. Whatever we need to do, make sure you know we are doing it. I remember just dropping to the floor. No tears were coming out, but I was just, ugh. It was all, it was like being winded. Like, I just screamed. I'm just like, no, like, because we're in a catapult chase constantly. No, 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 like, well, what, what else can we do? It was like, you've just come in and like absolutely winded us. I just remember like just shouting. In the morning when I woke up, I looked at Ab and I thought, T today she's gonna, she's gonna pass away today. And she did that morning, but she waited until like my brother got there. And that was the, the moment where holding your daughter in your arms and having no response makes me, is the worst thing, the worst footsteps that you could ever, ever take in your life. What's going on guys? This video is sponsored by Louis. Some of you know him on Insta as Loads, one of the best Instagram names, let me tell you that. Guys, Louis has been building online businesses for the last five to 10 years, and he has spent the last five years coaching others one-to-one -one on how to start businesses. Louis's got over 2,000 profitable testimonials. And guys, let me be honest with you. I wouldn't let someone sponsor the show who I didn't vouch for. So trust me, it's legit. Literally, just go send him a DM on Instagram. It's at loads. All you gotta do is say to him, I come from the Blue Tick Show, help me make some money. And I know most of these people out there, scams, and there's plenty of people out there offering you millions and millions of pounds and stuff like that. Louis is one of the 1% who actually do it properly. Legitly, you don't need nothing. All you literally need is a phone and Wi-Fi. Send him a message and leave the rest to him. Guys, and if you wanna know why I'm sitting here pushing it so much, it's because realistically, doing a nine to five ain't gonna get you nowhere. And I know most people sit here and say this because they're getting some sort of commission for it and stuff like that, but I really ain't. I'm telling you as a good person, the host of the show, doing a nine to five ain't gonna get you nowhere. So go message Louis, say you come from the boutique show, just ask Louis for the business model, let him do the explaining and let him explain to you how he can help you. I'll see you soon. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today, I've got a guest and probably one of the strongest women I've had on my show yet. Sophia Faraji, how are you? Hello, thank you so much for having me, Mikey. Well listen, welcome to the show firstly. It's been a long time coming. I finally got you here. I'm glad to have you here and I want to hear your story. You've got a heartwarming story which all the viewers here are probably watching thinking, oh my god, let's hear it. So talk to us, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Um, firstly, I wanna say thank you for having me on your show. And I always say whether a podcast has got millions of subscribers or we have podcasts that have got uh, a following that is growing. You know, you guys inspire me so much. You know, every person that's out there that's doing a podcast, I always say. We inspire outreach. you. Yeah, yeah. And I just want to say, like, the work that you're doing, I've seen over the Blue Tick show of what you guys are doing on here. What Listen, you're doing, actually, I, on I here. I appreciate that. And, yeah, seeing the setup and the hard work that you're doing is just, just want to say before we go into it, like, it's amazing. So I do appreciate that. But yeah. forget about me. You're my guest today. Okay. I'm happy to have you here. Before we do dive into the, the story we're all here for, talk to me a little bit about you. Let's not dive into the emotional like side know? yet. What would you like to Upbringing, know? Upbringing, what was life like as a kid? Um, as a child, I was a very sweet and innocent little girl. What changed? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> um, and then as I was growing up, um, I started to experience different kinds of walks of life. That means um, parents not being together, anymore um the culture that i lived in um and then going you know i'm half asian half english so the culture that i grew up in um was just very diverse um it ends up coming to a point where when you've been brought up in an environment where it's so loving at home and then you see your parents split and then how old was you when they split 
Um, I think I was around eight when they split and um, that was a massive change for me. And I think that's where I started to feel like my behavior started changing as a young un, um, where my mom then had to go and have four jobs. Um. What's going on guys? It's your host, Mikey Mellon. I just wanna say thank you all so much for the support. Guys, I need a massive favor. Before we dive into this video, scroll down, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Let's go. Did you stay with mom or did you go with Yeah, dad? I stayed with my mom. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get the dad that I would have loved to have had bringing me up and raising me. However, my mom fulfilled two of them roles, a um, very strong woman. And I'm just so lucky to have been able to go through life um, as a strong female and a strong individual to show resilience from such a young age. Um, I watched my mom do four jobs. Um, me and my brother had paper rounds as ch children with my mom so we could keep the sky on um, and have them luxuries through life. Um, so life growing up was easy, but as well at the same time, it wasn't so easy because we did have financial struggles. And one thing that my mom taught me was to never give up and to keep going. Um, when my mom and dad were together, they had 14 houses and wow. um, yeah, but they built that from scratch. Um, when my mom and dad split, um, unfortunately my mom was in a relationship which wasn't um, so kind to her, we'll put it like that. Um, so for her, she just wanted freedom. Um, and an escape. You said your behavior changed. Yeah. What do you mean your behavior changed? Um, I became from, um, it's a really crazy one because when I look back on it now, I think that I was such a sweet, innocent child that hadn't experienced um, unkind situations around me. Then I started to experience unkind situations, you know, domestic violence and things like that um, around me, which ended up maybe making me change as an individual where I started becoming guarded or reserved in situations or very outspoken um, through school. Really. And as you got older throughout school, was did that behavior continue or did you? My, my behavior actually got worse. Um, and I think it's down to, um, I think a lot of people can resonate with this as well because from being such a sweet child to then going in catapulted into an environment where it's mom's working four jobs to make sure that she provides for her children um, to then start kind of having that time to roam around and do what I want. And when I was in school, um, I used to find practical really, really good. Like that's the only thing I could so, engage with. Yeah, when it come to pen to paper, I would be doodling my name and writing. They had ESPO at the back of the books, right? Yeah. In school, yeah. I used to like just color in them <laughs> things. I used just to- Just fidget basically. Yeah, like, and then just like the front boxes that you'd have with like name and things. I'd be just like creating like flowers and just all of that kind of stuff really. But yeah, I was that kind of person where I just wouldn't listen. And that was because my attention span wasn't engaging in algebra, in English, um, math, anything that I was good at. I was good at like drama, music, um, textiles, cooking. They were all my subjects. But I was just um, looking back on it now, I just feel like there was so much going on as a child. I feel like I was just executing behavior somewhere else that was not really me. Hello, scroll down, hit subscribe. Let's jump straight back into it. Do you know what I always say as well? I think a lot of people who, as you get older, you realize it is when we're kids and like actual real problems going on in your life, you never actually realize it. Yeah. As you get older, you look back and think, oh, bloody hell, I acted like that because maybe I didn't have a father figure. Maybe my mum was working too many jobs. She weren't like, it always changes. I think we only realize that as we get older mm -hmm. and then you show the respect to your mother and father that they deserve because there's kids always like why can't you do this for me why can't you do that and they're like i'm working i'm doing this and we're like but can't you just take me out can't you do this yeah. and we only realize it as we get older yeah and i think it's it is very important as we are young kids well when to the young kids watching as well mm. 
you need to show the respect to the family that, that yeah, is there. Abso absolutely. And also a thing that I never actually thought it was a problem. I never felt like I'd went without when I was a child. I always had a roof over my head, a warm home, clothes, uh, food. So I never experienced, um, I never felt like I was going yeah. without until non-uniform day came. And then I would wear a jumper. I mean, it makes me feel emotional actually talking about it. It's actually sad because I see the children going through it now. Uh, um, and I'd wear um, like say one jumper. This is so good that we're talking so candidly because it actually brings things up that you're not expecting. Um, but I'd wear like one jumper to school. It was actually just like a cream feeler jumper, I remember. And then it was like the next non-uniform day had come up and I'd wear the same feeler thing with yeah. like these like uh, jean leggings. And then I remember somebody in school on the third non-uniform day actually make a comment to me and say, what are you going to wear on the next uni non-uniform day? Your cream feeler jumper. And it's like, that actually like made me feel like at that particular point, did I then start experiencing the unkindness of like, oh, am I recognizing if, uh, are we poor? Like, yeah. Have we not got it? Like, and I didn't actually realize that I was that. I just actually thought- To you, you probably love that feeler jumper as well. I did, I did. You <laughs> know, when you just don't get out of, clothing, of a jumper. Literally. Like that was my jumper. And because it had a name on it, that was feeler, I actually thought, oh my God, like that's my designer, designer jumper. And like so innocent as a child. And I think walking through different steps of life and even having um, uh, suffer uh, suffering um my dad as well um you know promising to come and see me as a child and then leaving me um waiting for him at the window you know that was something that i experienced of always waiting for my dad to show up and when he did show up the time that he gave me was just to go and play in his friend's shop or he's going to the sauna place so i'd be playing pool with my brother yeah, so yeah. reflecting and looking back on that and seeing what i'd gone through to the point where i ended up cutting that relationship with my dad at a teenage age i'd say i don't even know whether it was like 12. is there a relationship um, there now or not? no absolutely not um and the reason for that is because i just after losing Azalea as well, for me, I just think how can a parent not be there for their child? Um, so Before the fact- we do jump into the Azalea yeah. thing, I do wanna ask, did your dad reach out during that time? Um, I think he reached out to my brother. I can't even remember, um, but I did experience not so long ago actually that he came to Azalea's garden when I was there, um, which I didn't expect, so. Yeah, maybe there's some... Do you think he regrets what he's done and he just don't want to show the face to you? I think as a grown man, especially at his age now, um, he's had many years to reflect on the behaviours that he's... He, on his behaviour that he's done, basically. And I think if you can't outreach and directly go to um, your child uh, after what they've gone through, for me, that speaks volumes. And I... I I get that, I get that. And it's but I know at the same time that anxiety must be there from his side as well. But because we've gone through so much um, and through therapy, I'm now realising that sometimes we're not all programmed the same. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help. I've realised that myself, definitely, um, 100%. Massively. As much as we expect someone to act a certain way in a situation, they don't actually see no bad in it. No. They're like, oh, but that's normal. I'm not meant to be doing that. And yeah. in our heads or your head, the way we're brought up and things are different, we expect a certain reaction. And when we don't get that, sometimes we're let down or we're angered. But sometimes 
they're genuinely in a completely different mind space. Yeah. They could be expecting something completely different. But moving on to the Azalea situation, if we call it the Azalea... Azalea's journey. Let's Azalea's, call it Azalea's, Azalea's journey, journey. Because it was a journey. And yeah. it was, as much as it was her journey, it was, I think, the whole of the UK's journey as well. And, and the world, everyone yeah. was part of that. And it was amazing to see. Mm. Everyone really stuck by it and rode that journey with you lot mm. and I respect everyone who done it absolutely what was that like um I think maybe let's start at the point of obviously me and Ashley being together um it was something that we'd planned we planned Azalea Azalea was very much wanted how long was you and Ashley together for before you obviously had Azalea Oh my god, you're literally sticking it on my toes, and you know, like as a female, do you know you're, you're meant, meant to know, know that? These That's be, you're yeah. meant to know that. A few years. <laughs> How did a you meet? A couple of years. How did you meet? Um, so we actually are from the same area. Okay. Um, so we have had, we had a friendship for like ten years prior. Oh bloody! So we known each other. Do you know when you're in the same yeah, yeah. area and you're all like mutual friends, to, know yeah. each other. Um, so like. Yeah, we've just we'd known each other for years and years, and then we just had the same mutual friends, which we ended up merging together. And then Ashley wasn't um, somebody that I would even think, oh, I could see myself being with you. There wasn't a desire yeah. for me to be like, oh my god, I want to be with Ashley because we'd already been friends. He was like um, somebody that I already knew. You always think as well, you're not going to be with somebody that you already know because there'd have been something that had happened before. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. The guy worked his charm <laughs> massively. Um, I think he tranquilized me. <laughs> <laughs> and how, but how did it, when did that change for you? There must have been a day that sticks out in your yeah, head when yeah, like it I, went from being just my mate who, oh, God, I don't see you like that, to, oh, honestly, my God, I actually want to be with this guy. Shall I tell you the funniest thing? It's like we all used to go out as friends together. Like we'd have shisha, we'd have food, but there'd just be like the girls and the boys and we'd just all into wine and like go out with each other. And then one day he'd messaged me and said, oh, he'd put into the chat, do you want to, anyone want to go to the cinema? And nobody wanted to go to the cinema. So like I'd said, I, I'd put it and let, I'll go. And then it was just me and him. But going to that, you had no sort of intention. It was literally going to the cinema with my mate. Yeah, genuinely. Do you know to the point where I'd actually messaged him and said, yo, you know that like we're going to the <laughs> cinema and this ain't no date. Like, yeah. do you know, to that point where I like actually put it to the point where if I was going on a date, I'd wear heels, I'd wear like tight jeans or, do you know, you get something. yourself done up. Yeah. I go, no, I was in a twin set tracksuit, trainers, <laughs> um, and I made sure that it was like non-date vibes. Anyway, to the point where we pulled back up, because at this point I was living at my mum's house and um, he'd we'd pulled back up on the driveway and I remember, I mean, like he literally ripped me for so long when we ended up together about that situation. Cause we'd pulled up, but even with my friends, you'd just sit in the car and you have a yeah. little chit chat, don't you? Then you go in. Anyway, the fact that we'd pulled up and I thought, Oh my God, what about if my mate tries to go in for a kiss? <laughs> like but at what the cinema, there was no sort of vibe like that at all. Nah, but do you know when you kind of like, oh, like, do I like him or do I not? Yeah. Or is it, do I like him because he's my friend? That's the mindset. That and it was a bit one-to-one -to -one time as well. Yeah. It's a little bit different when it's not a group of friends, just you and him. Yeah, but because I can just go out with a guy and be friends with him, that's why I'm, I was kind of cool as well. Um, but anyway, his mind after a later <laughs> date, I found out was, was completely different. But pulled up at my mom's house, I ended up like jumping out of the car so fast. As soon as that car hit the driveway, I was like, all right, then I'll see you later. Because <laughs> I was thinking, please don't let us have a situation. Yeah, um, yeah so that's what happened. Anyway, fast forward. And um, yeah, Ashley, from the start, wanted to have um, a child. Maybe he knew and felt comfortable with me as a woman and knowing my morals, um, what I stand for, my loyalties. Um, knowing somebody so well, he wanted to have a child pretty quick um, with me. However, for me, I always needed to be reserved. At the age of 30, I still hadn't had a child, so... That was just growing up, you know, growing up. Yeah. My dad wasn't there for me. I wanted to give my son, daughter, the best 
possible father that I didn't have. And I know so many people go out there and try and give their child what they didn't have their self. Listen, if it was to the point where me and Ashley weren't gonna be together, I always knew that Azalea um, was gonna have um, a great father, great family. So these are the things that I was looking for in that process. And obviously everybody knows Ashley, even myself included as a wild guy. Um, <laughs> so like I was not oblivious. Um, so I knew what I was walking into and the same way the shoe on the other foot actually, cause he, he, it's not like he was meeting me in my angelic days. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> I was wild too. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like merging our personalities together. But I think sometimes when two people of the same background kind of thing get together yeah it changes them as people yeah massively yeah. because they know they don't they haven't got to be bold or if they want to be bold they can be wild with that person yeah absolutely we did have so many like wild wild like a few years actually um to the point where actually do you know what i do see that you don't want to go out um, drinking, like obviously he was DJing everywhere as well and doing PAs. Um, I can see you don't want that and you don't want this. And then it was like, my head was clicking then thinking, okay, like maybe I can see something. But we communicated so well. Like, Did he become your best friend? He was my best friend from the start. Okay. And that's what, um, well. that's what made the difference. I'd never actually been in a relationship with anyone that was kind of, he was like my best friend. And then it was even weird to the point where we ended up moving in together, actually looking at each other like, what the hell is this? Like, how are we actually just living together? Cause we'd be like drinking on the weekends together, having a laugh. Like it would be, it was so casual to the point where it was like, I know that you are going to love our child so much and that's uh, that means everything at the absolutely. end of the day even if you and him split up knowing the fact that he's going to look after your kid boy girl whatever it turns mm -hmm. out to be means more than anything absolutely the relationship second priority the kids come first yeah so moving on from there you and him tried for the kid yeah tried for azalea sorry yes had azalea yes what happened um when i had azalea um let me say something, if the females out there, even the guys that are watching this, childbirth, oh my God, that was <laughs> something I was literally, can I swear on you? Yeah, say what you I want. I was literally shitting myself. Um, can I swear? I, shitting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I was like really just worried. I was thinking, oh my God, like I'm literally, at this point as well, I was like a size six to eight, so I was literally a little dot. And I was thinking like, this baby, like, how is it going to come out? Like, what the hell? Anyway, <laughs> to the point where I was in labor for like for forever, uh, to the point where I had to have an emergency C section, but my body went into like anaphylactic shock, um, to the point where I had to have an emergency C section, to the point where Ashley got removed as well, and they was going to have to sedate me so I could um, give birth to Azalea through C section. I didn't want to rob Ashley of that moment of welcoming his child into the world his firstborn into the world and experiencing that I didn't want to rob him of that anyway I was literally I felt like I was I was screaming at the nurses and the doctors and I was just like get Ashley now he could hear me down the corridor the guy <laughs> told me afterwards he was so embarrassed I was like, get <laughs> Ashley now anyway um I had to promise them. I, could, I felt my hand go up. When your hand goes up, I know that they're just about to push me with sedation. Yeah. And I swear to God, I whacked whoever was in front of me. I was like, get Ashley now. And I thought, actually, this girl yeah, is Let's not, get Ashley quick. Let's get Ashley. Anyway, um, they can't bring you in as a parent when you're under sedation okay. um, with a family member. It's just by law, I think it is, that really? you can't do that. Yeah, you can't do it when you're sedated. He could do anything to me. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, Azalea was then welcomed into the world. Um, Ashley cut um, the umbilical cord. Even at that point, uh, bearing in mind, I was cut open at this point, got like a big blue sheet in front of me. And then I'm still shouting, I'm like, go and cut the umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the two double doors would close. And I was like, I wanna see. <laughs> so then they've got the two doors open. And I'm like, do you know, like in my head, I'm so 
mentally like know what's going on i'm still going through this feeling like a washing machine like literally <laughs> like feeling like a full washing machine going on in my stomach and communicating i don't know how i did it but then like obviously that was our first experience um obviously it was covid it was locked down um so Ashley had to go. I was with Azalea in the hospital then by myself, um, just bonding, doing them first motherly things, which was like incredible. Like I was drinking up like every moment, every second of it, um, to the point where I wanted to get Azalea dressed in an outfit so we could leave hospital, being cut out. They're telling you like, don't get up. And I'm thinking- I need to get up. I need to get up. I need to get Azalea dressed. I need to get fresh. My hair piece was like hanging around, like absolutely matted somewhere. <laughs> Picked it up, I was just like, okay, <laughs> that's going in the case um but yeah i just wanted that full experience i just thought how the hell do these girls do it on social media let me tell you something girls like i know you've got makeup and glam in that room because the way i was trying to make myself look half decent i just thought you know what pass me a twin set and let me get out of here as long oh, as yeah. azalea was light dressed then we was we gone home you know we left the hospital what was the first couple home. nights back home with ashley like and the baby the first the first couple nights um he was very hands-on, um, which I knew he would be. Um, we were surrounded by so much family, actually. Um, my mum had done this massive welcome home thing with like balloons, baby girl, like we was just bombarded with people. But Ashley's very much a people person and so am I. So the fact that some people want to go home and just have their time. No, we was just like, I let's party. Everyone to know. I want everyone let's to know. Everyone <laughs> come round. Let's just like, like mingle. Um, yeah, and it was just amazing. Like the fact that Azalea was now here. This is something that we both like were so excited to have. Both of our families got on so well, and everyone was just so excited and over the moon to to experience and be a part of it as well. It must have been amazing for you being both your first baby as well. And that was like the family must have been going crazy. Yeah. You lot must have been going crazy. That must I have I been... was wrapped in so much love um, from my family and from Ashley's family. And Ashley's mom, um, I mean, like was amazing as a grandma. Like I can't rate her enough. Um, she was there 24 That's what makes it so much easier as well. Yeah, my mom was there for me 24 um, seven. My aunt, absolutely everybody, all the family. We was absolutely wrapped so tightly in, in love and warmth. We couldn't have asked for anything more. Has Ashley got brothers and sisters? Um, yeah, and um, I don't know how many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how many is it? It's, um, actually, we've got um, got Nikki here with me. She's Ryan, Matty, and he's... Four. And he's actually one of the, the baby. Uh, Only reason I'm asking was when his No, he's not. He's not. But, but no, he's actually, so like, um, they're, they're um, half brothers and sisters. So he's got one full sister. Okay. So he's the eldest out of him and his sister. Only reason I'm asking, that dragged on, I was thinking, I bloody hell, okay, I've yeah. asked the wrong question. <laughs> like, I opened up a can of worms. No, only reason I'm asking was when the other siblings had babies, yeah. When Ashley has a baby, was he like the favourite kid who's had the baby? And it's like, oh my gosh, Ashley's... No, no. He wasn't. Okay. No. Because um, I'm just saying, mum, I'm the favourite, so when I have a kid, you know, make sure. I've got Nikki sat here with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he, yeah? <laughs> I've got Nikki sat with me. So Nikki's, Nikki's actually here, guys, with me, and she's uh, married to Ashley's brother. So I'm being very careful in what I'm saying. So Ashley was the favourite, yeah? Okay, fair enough. If you look... Like <laughs> so if you all heard that then Ashley was a favourite <laughs> no but I think it's it's their memories probably stick in your head forever they're the best times ever home with all that and the thing is when family's there it changes everything when mm -hmm. everyone is there celebrating a newborn baby it's like amazing mm -hmm. I remember my sister she had a she's got three girls now every single time she has another kid all the family are back around there and you're like yeah. oh my god this is the best thing ever oh, I'd say yeah I I'd probably say, yeah, Ashley is the favourite child. I just like needed a second there. <laughs> However, when it comes to, I'm just thinking like Nicky's got Carmelo and it's not the fact that it was the favourite grandchild. No, he's, no, the, the he's the favourite child. child. You've got to be careful what you say, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm like double thinking this before it goes out and I start getting absolutely uh, <laughs> great. And then how long after having Azalea did the news or did yeah. what, what happened? How did you find out what happened? So, um... 
Checkups are always due for babies. Um, everything went well. The midwife came around, checked everything um, to the point where I was then on my six week checkup um, with Azalea, but she had cold type symptoms, um, bunged up. We'd gone to the doctor numerous times, thrush on her tongue. Yeah, it's completely normal. Give her these drops, um, constipation, um, give her laxatives to the point then it was the milk. So we were trying all of these different things. And then it was just like, geez, like, is this how hard it is to have like a baby? and like, like they need all of these things but obviously being a new mom um i don't know so i was just thinking okay these things can happen um and then on the six week checkup we gone i'd gone in to the doctors with azalea because it was locked down again so obviously ashley couldn't come um or just like it had been lifted basically but you, there's still restrictions in place um to the point where the gp um had got azalea laid down was doing all the checks sent me home everything's fine she's just a new baby blah 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 Anyway, the amount of times you change a baby's nappy is like a hundred times in a day. And I've got like OCD. So as soon as that line was coming up in a nappy, it was changed. Um, so all day she'd been changed. Next minute in the evening, I'd opened up Azalea's nappy and um, bearing in mind, she's got the cold type symptoms. She's got the constipation, all of this going on. Um, I then seen a bruise um, on their on her hip bone and I thought oh but we had this tendency to always do this and because everybody always wanted to hold her she needed yeah. bouncing that was the only thing that was soothing her which obviously makes sense down the line um so I just thought oh maybe somebody's held her and they've been bouncing her for too long just probably not move their yeah. finger maybe something like that happened anyway um I'd as you do as a new parent, you want to take a picture of everything. And obviously I was so camera happy all the time. Um, I'm like, got my camera above Azalea and then um, noticed mottling of the skin tone. You know, when you're cold and you get that mottling, it's like uh, as a baby, they get like mottling What's of the mottling? skin. It's kind of when the, the it, it's like um, when the, when the skin changes in terms of like, you get white, okay, yeah, like, yeah, 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 like yeah. the white patches yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, that started happening under the camera, but when I was looking at it by eye, I couldn't see it. Camera, eye, oh, I was thinking that's strange. Anyway, I thought that's really strange, but then my head, I was um, a dental nurse. So like I go through, I've gone through all of the medical stuff and understanding like the skin. And then I did aesthetics. So I understand all of like anatomy and all, all yeah. of that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, I've put my phone down and then I've run my finger just over the bump, um, the bruise. And then there was um, the reason why you do that as well, because if there is a bump underneath the bruise, that's the body going into protection mode. Yeah. So I run the, my finger over it and the bump underneath gave me an indication that something's wrong. So then I said, there's something not right here. Um, took the picture, sent it to the GP the next day. I'm cutting a long story short there. I've, I've written all of this in my book as well, by the way. But basically in the meantime, me and Ashley was gonna go to Manchester to have work. Um, my mum was looking after Azalea um, that morning. Um, and she wanted us to have some quality time together. Do you know, after having a child, yeah, it's yeah. like, you know what the mums are like. like basically, break. you two need quality time together just so I can have baby to myself. <laughs> That's basically what it says. Um, so mum did that. And anyway, we was in Manchester and then we got a call. Um, I got a call from my doctor because I'd sent in the picture to say that um, you need to take her into A&E. But in the meantime, my mum had thought that something's not quite right here, but I don't want to worry mom and dad because they're oh, wow. in Manchester. So my mom took her own, um, initiative. off her own initiative. Yeah, and took Azalea into the hospital to get checked. But when- And your mom thought that from the bruise? No, she thought that by, like Look, Azalea just okay. looked unwell. Yeah, yeah. So she just, because Azalea was then in her company, my mom actually worked in the hospital. So it's that's easier, just, a lot that's, easier, a, that's her second home. Yeah. That was her second home. So she just put Azalea in, took her there, and then basically we catapulted into the news of um, Azalea's got leukemia. And what, what they found out straight away? They did a blood test on her. So the blood counts came back where the white blood cells were at 200. That 
is usually on such a small scale. I'm talking, I, I don't even know off the top of my head now, but yeah. like 20, 30s, whatever it is, someone will correct me wrong in the comments. But at 200, that is when the body is like, we have got something going on. It's like big alarm bells. And yeah. did you, what, what happened? Like genuinely, what happens then when you find out that your, so your we, whole world? Yeah, so I, I didn't understand what was going on all at, Everything becomes loud. Azalea was there having injections. They were trying to take blood from her, but because her blood had clotted and it was so thick, they couldn't take, they couldn't draw the blood from her little hand. So um, I was stood with her at the side and just even from that point, it was like I was letting them do what they needed to do, but all she was seeing was mommy's yeah. face in front of her at eight weeks old. That's that's how young she was. And genuine question did you think everything was going to be okay yeah to yeah. you it was normal it was yeah, just, just checking up on her i, I genuinely sure thought okay. because the doctor was like oh she got this and these and we've been changing her milk and something like that i genuinely thought it was until that professional i don't know what his name i, I don't know what they are uh, but they came he came in anyway the doctor um and sat me and ashley down in the same room where everything was going on like family was there as well and basically said like i'm really sorry to have to tell you this um but she's got leukemia we don't know which type of leukemia yet so we need to take you into birmingham children's hospital from the moment we walked in there you guys know the story you know we Every, catapulted in there everything got real. and then yeah then shit got real basically um to the point where you're not understanding anything you don't know what's going on my thing the only thing that i had control about is making sure that my daughter had a smile on her face and she was dressed and clothed clean nappy um to the point where she couldn't actually feed anymore um so they fit her ng tube to to feed her so that was scary and when you're sitting there and you hear leukemia did you still think everything's going to be okay? Yeah, because I didn't have a great understanding of yeah, you're not a leuke doctor. what le leukemia yeah. is. Like you hear things or, and I didn't, when you're catapulted into something and you're not absorbing anything, all I wanted to do is listen to the doctors coming to me. I wasn't researching anything online and I can say that is the best thing yeah. to not do. Um, focus on what's going on. I didn't realize and I know it sounds so stupid, but I didn't realize leukemia was cancer. I hear cancer and I think, oh, that's cancer. But because I wasn't hearing the word cancer, it was leukemia. You thought, oh, I didn't know. give it a day or two, I can I, I Yeah, I didn't know. Like, oh, there's, there's, there's something I just wasn't, I don't know whether I've just had a baby. I'm like six, uh, eight weeks into having a baby. You've got baby brain, you've got so much going on. I've had emergency C-section. I've had all this going on with the doctors. My head was frazzled. How did Ashley take it? He um, was quiet. He was lost in the unknown. Because um, when you look at Ashley, you think big tough man. You think yeah, he I can, would he say can it take was on the world, but it was me in in that situation that took lead to. Um, to all of this maybe it's because i had a medical background where i was familiar and i knew that what was that what's that what's that my head was kind of like that um in shock when yeah. you when you've experienced in so much shock i don't even know how to describe it like absolutely broken he couldn't pull himself together um he was shattered because we all look at ashley everyone does on social media and you look at him and you think he's built like a machine hmm. it's the truth we do no you don't look at him and think oh soft little man you look at him and think big tough man mm -hmm. prior to this situation of course and then to go through what he went through it from what we see on socials has changed him as a person completely he's gone from be his his whole world was the nightlife that was his world now his world is the azalea foundation that's it from what we see of course and I think it's your world as well. And it's something that will be part of your lot's life forever. Whether you whether yeah. you have a, another kid or not, Azalea Foundation is there forever now. Mm -hmm. And what you lot have done with that foundation is amazing. That's all I can say is you lot have done something which is amazing nonetheless. But to touch on the hospital situation, you're in there. You've been told 
your daughter, your world, everything you've wished for for the last eight weeks has got leukemia. What actually goes through someone's head? I, I, I'm trying to imagine it now and put myself in the position, but you can't actually process it. You drown. The only word that I could probably put together for that is you drown. You are literally like a sinking ship because you have zero control. You don't have any results to what's going on. They've not diagnosed the actual leukemia of which it is because there's ALL and AML. Um, and you don't realize what's ahead of you. And you were still in COVID, right? Yes. Family couldn't come? No. So it's we literally, we was allowed to stay together. Um, Azalea had had surgery, had a central line put in. We'd gone into intensive care. We stayed together for a weekend and then we got separated um, to the point where that on its own was scary. Um because now you're not even there. Yeah, it's like looking at each other, knowing that like, you know, like, because I'd been stepping up to it. It's like, I wanted to protect Ashley and Azalea. He wanted to protect me and Azalea. And we just knew that we're about to go and face this battle alone. But we know that we need to stand in line with each other. We're doing it as a team, uh, no matter if we're split. Like, it's fucking game on and like, the thing is you went, you went from having no control to having no no control literally yeah. because when you are there as much as you're not doctors you, you can't do anything but mm. you're there in your head you're still there you're still part of her life you're she can see you you can see her yeah. that's enough yeah when you've been told all right it's covid now you gotta kind of just wait a little bit you must have just froze and been like, what? What, do you, what do you mean? Do you know what it was? It wasn't about myself or Ashley at that point. It was about Azalea. Yeah. It doesn't, even though you know it's happening and it's scary, look what's in front of you. My priority is my daughter, um, not Ashley. Ashley's priority isn't me. Uh, we, As parents, it's just a parental instinct straight away. It's like grown ass man, grown ass woman, let's go. We, we've got this. Um, and that's when it, come to the point of surrounding Azalea with nothing but light smiles and Club 100. Um, that's what we called it. We called it Club 100. Uh, as soon as Azalea, we, anybody, including doctors, nurses, they all know you go into Azalea's room, even if it's bad news that you're delivering, take me and Ashley out of that room. Yeah. That's Club 100, that's where we sing, we dance, we play, we have like surrounding Azalea with- um, Positive energy. Positive energy, always. And to do that yourselves, because what you lot are going through is the hardest part of it all. Obviously, Azalea sat there not knowing what's going on. Absolutely. She isn't, she's a, a baby. She's mm -hmm. in the doctor's hands. You lot are taking on all of Azalea's pain and each other's pain as well and going through it together mm -hmm. and to sit there and still bring a smile on your face yeah. jump up and down to make her smile and laugh that's probably harder than anything but you lot must have been in a bubble at this point we was we was in a massive bubble and one thing that i always will always show gratitude for is um the people the nurses the doctors uh the staff the parents on the ward the children on the ward they was our family, but we couldn't even interact with them properly. We had to open our doors and talk to each other over the side of the, the cubicles. Um, the nurses became our family. The nurses became, oh, it's so sad. Azalea's aunties. Oof. And that was like the saddest, uh, heartbreaking thing but the fact that they uh, you know like to this day and forever I will be grateful for the NHS and the the love that the staff give to us um, because they were our family they made Christmas Christmas they made these occasions um, so wholesome um, and was trying to do their job at the same time but surrounding Azalea through all these different moments, I would always dress her up. Um, when it come to like Halloween, I would be dressing Azalea up. I created her space, even though I didn't want her cot to be just an empty clinical yeah. room. I dressed her room with cards from her cousins, um, pictures, everything. Her cot was surrounded. So I was just always about law of attraction. I wanted to surround her with family, friendly things, rather than 
even like the beeping noises, I can't overcome them. So I wanted to surround her in positive energy. Um, yeah, and always dress her up and make her enjoy each moment. And how long was you like, in the hospital for? Six months. Wow. Um, yeah, six months. Um, Probably felt like forever. Forever. Um, lying on a <laughs> plastic bed that's pulled out, um, you know, I'd always took Azalea in with me. You know, she had an NG tube. She had her lines connected to her onto a machine. The nurses would come in and be like, mom, like you need to put her back in a cart. But it's so sad, the fact that I knew how to sleep with my baby, well, my baby sleeping next to me um, and know how to maneuver her. I know how to maneuver, even like now, you know, I'd flick that wire down there and then have to maneuver like that, so nothing pulled. Yeah. And and they're the sad things as an oncology parent um, that you get used to. And it was, it was, it was your life. Yeah, it, it was. was. And in your eyes, there was light at the end of the tunnel, whether you wanted to believe it or not. Mm -hmm. There weren't. I can, I can say, I weren't in your shoes, but. You didn't give up. Yeah, There weren't a day not. that you thought, no, I'm giving up. No way. Even when them doctors and nurses used to come in to me and Ashley, I mean, I would be sat there in a meeting talking about Azalea's results with Ashley by my side and I would stare that oncologist in the face and I would tell her, no is not an option. It's not an option. Whatever we need to do, make sure you know we are doing it. And, you know, to the point where I knew Ashley was behind his mask thinking, oh my God, can you not put that any more gentler? And I'm just like, this, we are playing with life and death here. Yeah. There's no room for any error anywhere. To the point where I feel like I should have left that hospital with a degree because I understood how the livers were working, the kidneys were working, how much fluid, how many mills azalea needed to flush the chemotherapy out i knew everything i had all my notes i had my workings out i'd call the nurses in to sit there to explain things to me even using terminologies of like the white blood cells as the white cars the red cars if i didn't get it they would sit there and be so patient with me i needed to understand this what was going on so when I look at Azalea, I can be the best mom yeah. that I can be because nurses go home, doctors change. Their cycles are changing all the time. Uh, they're on shift, off shift. You don't know what the last person's mm -hmm. done. I'm there 24 seven. I'm handing over to Ashley. Ashley's handing over to me. You guys can't... You're giving the doctors updates. All right, I'll just let you know, literally. But it was to that point and sadly, um, there was one day, and I think Ashley actually thought that I was being super extra. Make sure you check the syringe of what's going in, what Azalea is getting drip fed, to the point where it's like, yo, Saf, chill out. And I'm like, you don't know, that nurse could be, you hear stories in the paper, yeah, right? You, you hear these horrendous stories. Now, when you've got time there and you're thinking and you're not there as a mother, because we're me and Ashley have now changed, things are going through my head. What about if that, when I'm there, I'm doing this and I'm doing that, I'm OCD with the cleaning, making sure everything's done. But what about the medicine? We need to learn the medicine. Ashley, what syringe is being put in? Double check on her sheet that that is there. To that extent, I was so articulate which thankfully one day Ashley did check and there was one medication that Azalea actually came off and she was about to be given it because the nurses come in just with our boxes and syringe it through the lines. And one day it came and then it was to the point where, oh, actually uh, Azalea is no longer on that medication. Wow. That's when I said, that is why you need to check. Not the fact that they don't know how to do their job. It's just, unfortunately, we live in, yeah, uh, People are human. And also yeah. there's sick people out there. That's my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's yeah. sorry. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And, but when obviously you and uh, Ashley took turns, you was going home? No. So we actually stayed over the road at a hotel. Um, the family all come together. Like we are so lucky that we was wrapped with so much love. Um, the family, I didn't even know what was going on, but the family had taken care of everything. Um, and we'd, it was scary to go home because we'd live like 40 minutes from the hospital. So if something happened, it's which at any moment, something could happen. You don't want to be the fact that you were 40 minutes away from home. You want to be the fact that you can go straight in there 
And if, unfortunately, you have to think like that if they are your last minutes, I don't want to be panicking at home thinking I've got to get 40 minutes to that hospital, get into the hospital, you know, and lost that time with my daughter. So yeah, 100%. We, we did, we stayed opposite. And when you would go back to the hotel, how did you function genuinely, not knowing that you're there? Because was every minute, all right, Ashley, can I come back now? All right, Ashley, can I come back now? How, how was it? We had a rotor, so... Um, it was one of us would do nighttime, one of us do daytime, so Switch. the other one could sleep. Um, no parent is good on running on exhaustion, which I know so many parents run exhausted continuously. So imagine being in that situation. One of us had to be functional. Um, so we'd go back to the hotel, we would eat, um, and then we would sleep. You're exhausted. My head would never rest. I wouldn't never sleep properly in the hospital. Did it ever get better? Did doctors ever say we're seeing improvements? We're seeing improvements? Yeah. Um, you know, we had a massive outreach and this is where people will always say like, you know, it's just people asking a question as well. So I'm happy for anyone to ask a question because it's just, uh, they're not rude questions. It's just like a, oh, why was that? Yeah. Why did you share Azalea on social media? It's a very perfect question for somebody to ask, like a reasonable yeah. question for somebody to ask. Now, my response was, you share your child on socials because you are so proud of your child. You, they're at the park on a swing and they are eating their first things. You're sharing it, you're posting it on socials, like, oh my God, look, she's so cute. You're so proud of your child. So why can I not do the same? Yeah. So for me, I was always, doing that anyway and obviously my following was small um I was doing it to my family my friends like look oh my god look at this and um to the point where it was catapulted um nothing changed because I was just behind closed doors I was just doing what I was doing from the start no, it's just now being still the same person it's just now I had more following um and that didn't change anything. I was I was genuinely just being the same as I was from day one to 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 ho who I am now, and that was received like the kindness, the support that the public gave to me, and I speak just from me at this point because I was by myself with my phone, that I could sit there when I was lying in bed and it would distract me. People were telling me like Azalea is so beautiful, she's got this. Um, sometimes I'd be struggling as a new mom. I didn't know like Azalea was teething, like what's the best thing to give her? All I'm thinking is medical stuff. And people will be sending teething rings. They'll be sending things to put like uh, frozen things into for us. So yeah. I'm so grateful, like genuinely the nation pulled together and really wrapped me so tight as a mother to help me be a mother to my child. Because everybody was involved in that. Everybody. Literally, I remember it. My sister, like we said off camera, she bought the orange bracelet. Oh my God, yes. I, I got that when you told me that when I came in. I was just like, where have I actually put it? Maybe it's around here somewhere. But yeah, when you told me that Every, she had a bracelet. Everyone was involved. Yeah. Everybody. And I think to once see the UK, the nation come together for a positive thing. Yeah. As much as it's not positive, they stuck together as a team forever. Mm. And... Everyone was involved. Mm. The, the There was a GoFundMe page, right? Yes. And everybody, like there was no, oh, let's not, it was, everybody was involved. And it was, for once, it was like, oh, we're, we're sticking together. We're doing something good. There's a community. Yeah. And this is where it comes to when Azalea needed a donor. Yeah. Um, and this is when, for me, humanity, you've seen the love in humanity. And in one weekend, Azalea got over 80,000 people on the donor register. Now that is a record. Um, and the fact that the community and the nation come together to do that swab, it's just a simple swab in the inside of the mouth that you take, put it in an envelope and you send it back. That could save somebody's life yeah. um and the fact that you know that's you know at that point was just like a oh my god we needed we was desperate for a donor when when we got in over eighty thousand um people sign up for me i just thought wow like oh my god like who are all of these people in my head i'm thinking wow like that is when it started recognizing to me that my followers are having an impact 
on this journey and I'm so grateful to these followers for the impact that they're having because it's my daughter. Because in your eyes, it's you, Ashley, and your baby. That's yeah, it. That's and I it. didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel, you know, me, Ashley, and my daughter, and the family around us. The next minute, we catapulted into. Not only did we feel totally loved by our family and our close friends, we also then just had the nation raptors i felt like we was a walking army together i felt like there is nothing like cancer fuck you uh yeah, we're for coming for you 100 percent. and you lot as a as a family you smashed it yeah you did yeah of course we can all sit here to saying i don't know how to put it in the words but the result wasn't what we wanted i don't know how no, to... we did well we did get the donor we got the donor match um through the work of the nation we got a donor match azalea got a hundred percent match that was our next cycle so what happens is when you get the match then your body gets cleared in with chemotherapy the donor then gets injected through the central line or with uh, cells and then the body then has to start working itself. So the new cells go into the body. It's like a new head gasket yeah, yeah. Um, are being put on. But what happened is Azalea's body, the memory of her body was too powerful for the donor that came in. It rejected, she engrafted at 100% first. That's why we went to ring the bell. You yeah, know, we yeah. was excited. We was going to ring the bell. 30 minutes before we went to ring the bell that day, we got told after having blood tests taken that Azalea, had relapsed then cat we went to go home and not ring that bell that day and i felt like me and ashley felt like azalea's come this far and she did engraft she actually did engraft so if it was five days earlier she would have been ringing the bell it's just the fact that timing and whatever so we made it so she could ring that bell that oh, it's so sad that was her moment and when you're laying in your hospital room and you hear that bell being rang, your only wish is for your daughter or your child to ring that bell. And I needed to hear that bell being rang for her. And she fought so hard, like how are we taking that ring away from her? She did it, she did get to 100% donor, she did graft. Um, you know, she come through them extensive chemotherapy treatments that could have taken her life. She did it, she fought it. So we rang the bell because she deserved to ring that bell. Um, unfortunately, the next part of the treatment that they gave us um, wasn't getting rid of them leukemic cells, which is why we ended up having to take further action and go to Singapore. That was our next yeah. option, to go to Singapore. But until we got that treatment plan, plan put in place and we got confirmation from Singapore, now this is an important part of why I say this is because there's so many GoFundMe's out there um, that do things just in case. Our case wasn't a just in case. It was, we need to go to Singapore. Like next week, we're ordering passports. Um, Azalea's passport, obviously she's so young, she yeah. hasn't got a passport. Um, emergency passports were being ordered and it's like next week we need to go there. Um, so we put the GoFundMe out there at that point because we needed to go. It within was a, yeah, within three hours, um, Azalea had raised over a million pounds in three hours. That's when you knew the love was just pouring from everybody and like anyone that's watching that did support us. Like I'm so grateful that you gave us that comfort of knowing that we could get to Singapore. No Fast stress. forwarding. We didn't get to Singapore. Cancer is so quick. Within a day, that cancer can just eat your body. Like Pac-Man, just munching away. That's how quick. To the point where me and Ashley then got the news of um, there was nothing more that they could do for us. How did you both take that? I... Especially you uh, being the strong backbone of the situation. At that point, we both was. Um, at the start, it was just me, and then Ashley took lead in um, understanding the diagnosis. 
um, he really, really tuned in. He it knocked him to the floor, and then he was having words with his brother um, and um, Nikki's dad. Actually, who is um, is a professor. Nick is with me. He's prof- biochemical engineering uh, all of that jazz um but yeah um understanding the diagnosis um and the conversations they'd have actually really really tuned into the diagnosis at that point i really didn't i didn't want to know i just wanted to know what we're doing to get out of here um so at that point the strength and that journey that we've both been on we were parallel uh very very much uh, how did you both take the news um the nurse, the oncologist walked in with tears in her eyes. And when she hadn't never walked in with tears in her eyes because she was so professional, um, she walked in with tears in her eyes and with a face. And I just, we was waiting for the news at that point to come through to say that we can go to Singapore. Um, of like, what, da- what date yeah. are we going? Where are we? When should we book it? Yeah, for? yeah, when are we, when are we going? And she came in to say that Singapore had um, contacted them to say that they'd had cells been sent over to them. Um, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but we didn't discuss, why was you going Singapore? Because basically uh, we needed to have a haplotransplant. Well, that would have been a potential. So basically there was nothing more that the UK could do. So we was going over to Singapore because they had a way, a method, uh, without being so complex, they had a method in what they thought could potentially help. Help, yeah. It's like okay. CAR T cells, and they've got a CAR T cell that's over in Singapore that could attack this CD thirty three and thirty four that Azalea had in her body, and basically they had that to go and attack this marker that come up in Azalea's cells. Okay. We don't have okay. it in the UK, All right. we, we, so basically that's why we were going there uh, for this CAR T therapy, um, and then potentially having a haplotransplant, which is then another bone marrow transplant, basically. Um, but it come back to say that, you know, once it had got over there, the migration had just catapulted and there was nothing that the CAR T therapy, rather than taking Azalea over there, yeah. they took the blood cells over there, put it underneath, let their CAR T cells work on there to the point where it was so powerful that AML leukemia is that, that there's nothing that the CAR T cells could do. So she walked through the door and told us basically this news. And I just remember like dropping to my knees the room was gray we didn't have the blinds open that day either um yeah and i just remember like sobbing and do you know when like you it was just so strange i'm literally like tuning myself back into that moment i remember just dropping to the floor no tears were coming out but i was just it was all it was like being winded, like I just screamed. I'm just like, no, like, cause we're in a catapult chase constantly. No, 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 like well, what, what else can we do? It was like, you've just come in and like absolutely winded us. I just remember like just shouting. Um, Ashley was silent. You know, when you've just have no words, it was, it, it was so, devastating that when somebody tells you news because the thing is and you're, you're lost for words as well you're expecting her to walk in and tell you what date you're gonna book yeah Singapore. what's going on yeah we it, you're just winded you just have no you have no words you and abs you haven't had time to process it we're getting told all the time remember this is not going to work this is not going to work this is not going to work so in our heads you're kind of thinking they're coming back in and telling us this ain't going to work but actually this is our only option yeah. It literally brought me to my knees. And from then till the day where Azalea passed away? Yeah. How um, long was that? We got told it could have been that night. So family got called and they was allowed to come into the hospital. Um, Azalea was so resilient, so strong. Um, you know, it was a couple of weeks um, when we got sent home. Probably a week when we got home. A week, I think it was. I can't remember the dates. I've not actually looked into that, but probably say about a week. So we got told it could be her last day. Um, And she powered through. Um, We took her home. But even at this point, um, I then had to ask the questions of how, 
how is she gonna pass away? Like, what do I have to expect? I had um, people coming into my home, palliative care, and I literally felt like it was death walking through the door at me. Like, I wanted to tell them to get out of my house. Like, you were not meant to be here. To the point where um, at home, it was still the same, you know? We would smile, we would dance with her. We would do everything. At this point, I was having castings made to get her hands and feet done. I was having her fingerprints taken. Um, I had her heartbeat taken. I had everything that I could think of taken. So when she was in heaven. And the that, hardest part of it is the unknown. As in, it's so bad to even talk about, but when is our princess, our angel gonna, gonna pass gonna away? Wings, yeah. Um, I got told at that point that she could potentially bleed to death. Um, so hearing them words, it basically started happening. When she was crying, there was blood coming out in her tears. Um, wow. That was really, really painful. And then I knew something's gonna happen, something's happening. But as me and Ashley always were, we knew what was going on. It meant that there was, she needed platelets. She needed a transfusion. She was always on a blood transfusion or a platelet transfusion. Um, she needs platelets. She needs something to clot the blood. Bam, in the car, we got the gas oxygen canister in the back with Ashley for if she needed oxygen. And this was just our norm, carrying an yeah. oxygen tank in the back of the car. Going to hospital, they'd sent us home on end of life. We were back in that hospital, demanding that Azalea has platelets. They give her a bag of platelets, the blood would stop crying. I couldn't see my daughter. If there's something that I can do, I'm going to do it, give me 100%. the platelets. We did everything until um, the morning when I woke up. Um, the night before it was really crazy because Ashley would be sleeping downstairs on the settee. He used to get scared to go to sleep in the night. Um, and he'd sleep downstairs. I don't know whether because he felt like it was a, he could be alert and he's there, yeah. he's ready for like the medicines. Azalea was on like four times a day of medicines. So I don't know whether he thought, okay, Saf's upstairs sleeping. This one night he decided to come to bed. Um, so it was all three of us laying in the bed. Um, and I was thinking there can be miracles when you believe to Azalea. <laughs> and that was because I always sang it to her, do you know, like, because I just thought, keep believing, keep believing, keep believing, even from a kid, keep believing, keep believing, yeah. um, just keep having belief, keep going, keep going. Even at this point, I just thought, there's miracles. So I kept singing it to her because I thought, okay, if you're gonna go to heaven, we need to still keep believing because we're gonna spend an infinity together, um, eternity together. Then Ashley had come in from the ensuite come and got into bed. In the morning when I woke up, I looked at her and I thought, T today she's gonna, she's gonna pass away today. I never ever said that on any part of my journey. Wow. Um, and she did that morning, but she waited until like my brother got there, like, um, and it was like she waited because she knew that the people that were in the room were like, it's like she knew that I needed to wait, you know, like, you know, where's Dan? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, it's like she she heard, like she was, she's always so aware. And yeah, and then it was, I'd always put the monitor on her to check her heart, to check her pulse. They would tell you, you don't need to do that. But I needed to check how fast her heart rate was going. Then I seen it go from, it was catapulting sometimes at like 180. You know, when you go to wow. the gym, yeah, of what yeah. your heart rate's like. Hers at resting point was 180 sometimes. That's how bad the leukemia was attacking the body to the point where I'm now looking at it, it's on 54, 50. Wow. To the point where I couldn't even pick up the tape and then I'm thinking, is it happening? Is this what's happening? And then we just effed off the machine and it was just like, we just knew. That's when the phone calls had come in, like to come to the house. And then, yeah, she passed away um, with us there in mine and Ashley's arms. <sighs> yeah, and then that was the the moment where 
holding your daughter in your arms and having no response makes me is the worst thing the worst footsteps that you could ever ever take in your life um there's nothing else that can ever shake me now but at that point you think you're going through hell when that's happening losing your child now that's how azalea was keeping me and ashley strong through our journey you don't realize and then when she was no longer with us that's when you realize you, you need to you need to stand up you need to get on your own feet well, i've got to say you sit here today in front of me with tears in your eyes 100 percent, but still a smile on your face absolutely and i've got to say credit to you both because mm. you're both ashley's not here of course but both of yeah. you are champions mm. like you're warriors will real real warriors and azalea sitting in heaven right now looking down on you both she's proud yeah. like genuinely you've both like even to come on the show today which i appreciate you so much for coming mm. on and telling the story is i couldn't and i'm a man yeah you've got strength which she's giving you the strength absolutely and that's that's exactly what i'll say is your children give you strength even if your ch child is in heaven whether your child is in heaven or on earth your children give you strength to not quit to not give up my daughter's just watching me in a different way yeah. and she's watching ashley in a different way where we always say that you know through the public donating and raising so much money has been able to help us raise our child together in a different way through the Azalea Foundation, helping so many other children and families fighting. Well, you're still a mother and he is still a father. Absolutely. She's just waiting for you, I guess. Yeah. And you lot have like, I can sit here and say it 101 times over and over again, but your strengths of both of you is amazing. She makes us resilient. Um, resilient and I tell you right now I'm actually walking through another journey that you wouldn't even think that I'm walking through um and do you know what that is that is resilience from what Azalea has taught me and when I've gone through the hardest thing in my life you might be able to knock me but you won't push me back down to the place where I felt true pain yeah because um, that, that's nothing's worse than that no N nothing no matter what happens in your world nothing at all no but I do want to say that like through the you know turning such a heartbreaking um, journey into something positive is something that I can come on podcast and speak about so people can relate to it because there isn't a voice out there. There isn't someone that you can relate to, to think I didn't have anybody to look through. There wasn't no influencer out there. No. There wasn't no celebrity that I'm looking at out there to think they've gone through that. What did they do? Hence the reason why I writ Loving and Losing You Azalea, which ended up becoming a best selling book because I poured my pain and through pouring my pain through me and my daughter and Ashley, has been able to help other people. That's what's helping me come through. Azalea was helping over 80,000 people on the donor register. My daughter inspired millions of people around the world. We had monuments lighting up around the world, Niagara Falls lighting up orange. And the fact that so many people took inspiration and still do to this day through what they've taught her, uh, you could imagine what she gives me. And the yeah, fact that definitely. my mental health suffers and I suffer, I'm going back into therapy like within the next couple of weeks. Um, I had therapy, I cannot recommend therapy enough. The amount that we execute and um, into day-to-day -day life, getting a new car, looking after yourself, getting the new bag, jackets, trainers, the lot, investing into your mental health is something that I can only say has worked for me. It allows me to sit here as a grieving mom to speak to you and so many people that are watching and execute it. Obviously, Ashley deals with his pain completely differently to what I do. And that is each person deals with their own grief differently. There's no right or wrong way. Yeah. It's what works for you. But to be able to be here now through therapy and be able to speak so articulately about everything when I was an absolute mess um, only shows that the strength that somebody can continue. And I want to be a walking person um to really show people no matter what you're going through relationship breakups 
um, diagnosis, um, losing a child, losing a family member, whatever it is, you have a purpose here. When you're empty, my cup was empty, learn how to put drops of water into that cup. Because I'm telling you, within the last two years, I have grown and blossomed so much as a person to understand what my purpose and path is. If you would have asked me two years ago, I would say that I need to be up there with Azalea. So there's a purpose yeah. for everybody. But you, you have, and your your strength is coming from Azalea, whether you, no matter what you say, she's giving you both strength. She's giving the whole family strength because I look over at Nikki. Yeah. And she's not being able to not shed a tear. Yeah. No matter how much she's tried to sit there and be strong throughout the whole thing, it's, it's affected everybody. It's mm -hmm. affected everyone and it's strengthened everyone in your family as well. Absolutely. I and I just want to say as well with um, obviously Nikki being here, it's not because she is here, but uh, <laughs> um, like my brother and Nikki it, till this day are so emotionally available for me to speak to. And even when you have got somebody to speak to and that's been so supportive to you, you can think that you've got people to speak to. And I'm so grateful for my brother and Nikki. Um, but even taking therapy, when you still have got someone, me and Nikki speak four times a day, me and my brother chat all the time. But having an independent person that is there, really 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 and the, the good thing is as well is having a therapist where they're not in the situation yeah they're outside so sometimes as bad as it sounds they can talk to you from a reality standpoint whereas you and nikki could probably sit there all day and cry your eyes out together whereas you've got someone whose goal is to we're gonna get past this and i think that is what makes a difference with a therapist as well mm. his job is to help you get past it yeah absolutely and self-love as well you know everybody's banging on about self-love i i went from a size six to eight after having azalea i was a size 10 to then like ballooning i don't even know what it were there was just expandable <laughs> clothes that i was wearing but like seeing myself in um the public eye and gaining so much weight really affected my confidence and not only am i grieving my daughter i'm now comfort eating which i'd never done if anything i would stop eating and i'd go tiny this point of like comfort eating and not recognizing yourself i wouldn't recognize myself on tv i wouldn't recognize myself in a picture like where have i gone it's about self-love comes from within yeah. and the amount that i have been working on myself so much and like listen i make mistakes now i'm human but working on myself internally first is the first act of kindness that you can give to yourself don't worry about the outside worry about what's coming out of your mouth and the person that you want to become and then the rest will follow the hair will follow the the, the white teeth the jackets the shoes the do you know that for me i used to be like led from even being a kid you know like I need to have the new shoes, the new clothes, the that, to be validated. The validation in society now comes from what you've got, your followers, yeah. how you appear, and I think it's shallow. And, and it I is think shit. It is, um, it is really, really shallow, but it's having that message, and that's why I feel like my voice is powerful, because you've seen my journey, you've seen my appearance, you've seen the fluctuation in weight, you've seen, the mental battle that I've had to go through. And yeah, I do sit here now with makeup done, hair done, because it makes me feel confident, but my confidence is from within. That's where it starts. Yeah, and like you said, just to touch on, social media now has ruined everything in my eyes. Yeah. It has, everyone is trying to be someone. No one, if you ain't got X amount of followers, or you haven't got a blue tick, I'm saying it while well, my show's called The Blue Tick Show. Uh, well, well, you uh, bearing in mind, I do interview non blue ticks, yeah? yeah? It started off as a, a great disclaimer, idea. Disclaimer, disclaimer right it, there. It did start off as a great <laughs> idea to call The Blue Tick Show, but I interview more of my guests are not blue ticked. Yeah. But it's, if you haven't got it, you're no one now. Like, it genuinely, if you're not verified on Instagram, haven't got a K next to your followers. Sorry, you got an M. If you haven't got, if you haven't got a K next, you're no one Miss though. Mr. Fear, if you don't already follow me. <laughs> um, listen, I think everyone on here does, right? Um, but no, listen, truthfully, one thing I love about you is you still sit here with a smile on your face. And that beats everything. Yeah. Because you're not, 
sitting here. Listen, you're allowed to cry. We're human. We're mm. allowed to cry. I say that to all my guests. We're allowed to. Yeah. Everyone thinks it's bad to cry. And you've got to let your emotions out sometimes. Absolutely. We get taught to, uh, like, being strong is by holding back your tears. Being strong is actually shedding your tears and, like, really showing emotion because it allows the next piece of person to feel emotion. And because we're in a society now where we do talk about mental well-being, people are feeling more comfortable. But don't get sucked into social media of thinking you need to be somebody that you're not. When people ask me what is the best thing that you would say about having a platform is the fact that I can really showcase my heart and my soul and my true identity of who I am as a person. And and you've done it right. I've gone through your Insta before you come on the show. I had a little stalk and you're not an average influencer. You're not just the girl who goes on there and... I don't actually know what my title is. You know, when people ask me, like, can you introduce yourself? I'm like, ah. <laughs> This is my name? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what you want to know. Yeah. No, genuinely. And last thing I want to touch on is what does the future hold for you? Because there's, your story is your story, but you're still yourself. Mm -hmm. And you will create your own story as well. Yeah. As much as Azalea is your story right now, and she'll forever have a part of your heart or your whole heart, you're your own person as well. Mm. And you, you've got a story to tell. As much as today is that journey, yeah. I'm sure we could probably sit here and talk about your life before all of that for an yeah, hour as well. Exactly. But what is your future now? Um, my future has been something that I've been really working on so gently I'd say not putting too much pressure on it and I feel like I'm evolving now as the woman that sits here now um I feel like my future holds so much purpose with the Azalea Foundation we are now doing PhDs which is incredible so we are funding PhDs um for the Azalea Foundation we just want that to grow I want that to grow beyond my lifetime so that's that part that's my purpose and my heart for me as an individual um going out with my friends um enjoying and it sounds so small but for me it's so big um going out with my friends interacting um you know like I'm not at that point where I really know what I want to do but all I know is I just need to keep being incredible <laughs> <laughs> Listen, just... I think it's because I follow my purpose and my heart every day I don't know what it is that I take each day, if I, if you would have asked me before my journey, how do you see your future? I'd be able to tell you. Now I live each day for what it is. And yeah. I genuinely live, if I wake up with anxiety, like I did the other morning, I was on the phone to Nikki, the next minute I was showered, hair done and everything. She's like, how the hell do you do it? There's so many obstacles, but I want to make a change. I want to make a change in society. So my real thing is I want to make a change in society and help people. In what sense of make a change in society? I want people to feel like that they can show up for themselves. And that's what actually helps me. That's how I see my future. Even if I go to seminars and talk about confidence, like I, I really feel like I've got so much to execute in that avenue. For me personally, I would love to have another family. Um, I would love to have that home. Like I've got my house, my house is like, people are like, oh my God, you should be so proud. Like you've done this by yourself. And, and I'm like, yeah, but you see the aesthetic. In my house, it's so empty. Like my house should be a, it's home. a house. Yeah, a house, not my a house home. is a home. My house is aesthetic. Um, it's not, I want to get to that point where I can create a home and not just have a house. For me, a family is everything. I want to be able to 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 go on that journey and do that. But listen, I've been outside for a minute or two and I've just <laughs> seen what's outside. outside and is, let me tell it's you, it's when I'm talking about outside. outside, like when I'm saying outside, if you don't get that term, outside is when you're out, out. And let me tell you something, that, is a, place, yeah. that is a playground <laughs> and a half. Like, let me tell you, my mouth is sealed um, because it's just scary out Outside's there. Outside, outside, outside. I am such an old school girl with old school morals. And the fact that when I go out and see the generation now, I like even like dating, like people are on all of these apps and stuff. I used to like just meet people. Now you, you're looking at, the hair or I don't like that or I don't like that or do you do that or how tall are you or how is this or yeah, it's, it's a outside. it like, is it's, insane it's 
So maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe I might just be on my own in in the uh, in the house. Absolutely. Are not. you worried about having another another baby? I am. Um, I am worried, and I say I'm worried because I was. Where and how does that happen? You go through all of your scans to get told that everything is okay. Um, I'm worried because with Azalea um, and going through my journey, I knew what an incredible mom I was and am to her. Um, with another child, I also know I will execute, probably catapult so much love having another child. Um, that is something that I would just love to have. I have to be in the right position yeah, and situation. Definitely. The same way I was with Ashley to have a family, we was, I need to see this, 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 there's a tick, there's a tick list. But it is scary, you know, after having a child and this is what's happened. The good thing is though, you have got your tick list. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there who don't, they just, want a child yeah and i think it's very important to have that uh, that tick list because god forbid relationships don't always last no but if you and your next partner split up somehow you still need to make sure that your child is going to be brought up the best way possible yeah and i think that's what your tick list yeah. <laughs> make, sh make sure of yeah your tick list is like that it is scary i can't say to anybody it's scary when you're pregnant and you're going through all of the tests anyway um you know is everything okay or is it this uh my my thing now i want that family but i won't be prepared to sacrifice who i am and my morals as an individual to get that 100 percent my morals are my morals. If God is going to put me on that path to um, allow another child to come into my life, then I'm here for it. If Azalea is my one and only daughter that I have until I'm united with her in heaven, then that's what it will be. But there's, I need my family. I need to be a mother with the father and have that home. That's just yeah. something I've longed for as a child. Well, it's... it's... I think it's every woman's dream. Absolutely. And I think on and that And I'm perfect as well, so I just actually can't even understand <laughs> like Listen. what's wrong with these guys out there. And on that note, I'm ending it. <laughs> We're about to get into you then, I'm no, joking. I'm, I'm out of it, I'm leaving. <laughs> Listen, honestly, as much as we're laughing again, it yeah. was amazing having you on the show. And I look forward to seeing you I was about to say, I look forward to seeing you outside for a second. Fine. Uh, you'll be outside. See, I'll see <laughs> no, you outside. Listen, I Don't look worry, guys. I look better. <laughs> <laughs> listen, pleasure having you on the show. Guys, if you do want to stay up to date with the Azalea Foundation websites and stuff. Yeah, I'll we've got the Azalea Foundation all. and they're on Instagram. It will yeah, all be in the description. Go click that. Stay up to date. And make sure you follow her journey as well. She's got good things coming. I have. You have? You sure? I have. Yeah? That's why I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.